Chapter 5 Brittany's here? Chapter 5 Brittany's here? Parker raised an eyebrow, anticipating a good reason for the odd behavior of his brother. I forgot something at home, reluctantly explained Gabe. She's bringing it. Did I just hear that right? asked Parker. He leaned forward in his chair. Brittany is at your place when you're not at home. She's moving in, clarified a frowning Gabe. It's less than three weeks to the wedding and she's going to sell her condo. It makes sense. What did Mom have to say about the two of you sharing a place? whistled Parker. Brittany's in the spare room until after the wedding, came Gabe's sharp rebuke. If you say so, easily conceded Parker as he leaned back in the chair, enjoying Gabe's discomfort. Are you okay with it? What do you mean, am I okay with it? scowled Gabe. Well, a week ago you would have avoided Brit like the plague, shrugged Parker. Now you're marrying the girl and she's moving in with you. I just want to make sure my big brother's okay with this new turn of events. Marrying her is my choice, determined Gabe. He neglected to voice what both of them knew. Maybe there hadn't been a lot of options besides Brittany. Maybe Marshall had pushed him into the decision a little hastily. I will be fine. Okay, nodded Parker, if you say so. Gabe narrowed his eyes, but declined to reply as Jessica knocked on his door, poking her head in. Brittany Crawford here to see you? Send her in, directed Gabe. A feeling of relief went through him. Now he would look presentable and have the proper files. Brittany gave Jessica an inscrutable look as she passed the secretary into Gabe's office. Holding the suit jacket on a hanger with a cover over it, she nodded to Parker. Hello, Parker. It's nice to see you. Good to see you, replied Parker as he leaned back to watch the show. Don't you have a coffee to fetch? Gabe reminded his brother. That can wait, remarked Parker quite contentedly. Thank you. Gabe took the hanger from Brittany, unzipping the cover and removing the jacket and tie. He draped the jacket over his chair as he pulled up his collar to lay the tie properly against the fabric of his shirt. Where's the USB stick? Right here, murmured Brittany as she dug through her purse. Frowning, she rooted around. I know I put it in here. Tell me you have the USB stick, said Gabe as he knotted his tie and adjusted his collar. I have the stick, she repeated, pulling out a pack of tissues, a handful of lipsticks, a wallet, and car keys. Brittany began loading up his desk with items from her purse as she searched. Why don't you just use the backup storage? Questioned Parker as he hid his smirk behind his hand. It's out for scheduled maintenance, managed Gabe in an even tone as he glared daggers at his brother. You know, if you used an internet-based storage system, you wouldn't have this problem, mentioned Brittany as she put even more items on his desk. Then I would have to deal with the problem of possible cybersecurity threats, answered Gabe as he stared at the growing pile. He shrugged into the suit jacket. Just how much do you fit into that purse? Oh, it has everything I need, an unconcerned Brittany replied, putting a makeup bag down along with another small bag a container of lip balm, and a set of nail clippers. I can't possibly go without it. It's like a never-ending magical bag, observed Parker with fascination. Can you pull a rabbit out of the purse? What would I need a rabbit for? chided Brittany, as she fished out the USB stick triumphantly. There it is. Gabe quickly grabbed the USB stick. Great, thanks. Wait a moment. Brittany followed him out of the office. The meeting is about to start. I need to set up, a rushed Gabe said, striding past Jessica, who gave him a censorous look. Two seconds, insisted Brittany. Gabe! Gabe stopped, turning to face her. Britt, there isn't time. I have a meeting to run. Whatever you want to talk about can wait. You can make supper. Go ahead. Put your stuff wherever you want. I have to go to the boardroom. I just wanted to straighten your tie. I know how you like to have everything perfect when doing presentations, Brittany informed him. She reached up, moving the piece of fabric. Now your tie is straight. Have a good meeting. Feeling chastened, Gabe nodded. Thank you for everything. You're welcome, smiled Brittany. She watched as he made his way down the hall. Well, that was special, mused Parker. Engaged? 
Brittany lifted an eyebrow as she pulled her gaze away from Brittany's ring to give Parker a sidelong glance. He didn't say anything. It's new, confirmed Parker. Probably will be an announcement in the society paper soon, knowing Mom. I had no idea, admitted Jessica, irritated by the news. Now you know, chirped Brittany as she swung a predatory smile on the pretty secretary. Parker, don't you have a meeting or something? I think the lovely secretary and I should have a chat. Oh, I don't know if that's a good idea, mentioned Parker as he looked at the two ladies. I think it's a brilliant idea, cooed Jessica, dripping false enthusiasm. We are going to be the best of girlfriends. I think so, too, gushed Brittany. Oh, boy, Parker muttered. He glanced at his watch. Gabe would not be happy if he was late. Then again, Gabe might not appreciate what was about to happen here. I think I should escort Brittany to her car. I would hate for her to get lost in the building. Sometimes it can be a bit confusing, and even I get turned around. Go away, Parker, requested Jessica sweetly. Brittany and I have things to discuss. I promise she won't get lost going to the parking garage. Gabe would have to handle this on his own, decided Parker. Have a nice afternoon. Brittany waited for Parker to leave before approaching the secretary with a handout. Brittany Crawford. Jessica Porter replied Jessica as she coolly shook Brittany's hand. Let's get a few things straight. I'm the secretary. I do not sleep with the boss. I am efficient and I assure his efficiency. I'm career focused and anything that poses a threat to my boss at being his best and at the top of the company is a threat to me. Gabe is a well-oiled machine and doesn't need to be bogged down with a wife or children. I fully expect him to amalgamate with several hospital change over the next decade, taking Ramsley HMC to the next level. He needs to concentrate on his career to achieve those objectives. Gabe doesn't need a family life, nor is he a family man. You should quit now. Wow, you don't pull any punches, breathed Brittany. She gave Jessica an admiring look. I appreciate your honesty. Jessica waited, then gave Brittany a confused look when she didn't say anything more. That's it? That's all you have to say? I'm the one wearing the ring. Brittany flashed her engagement ring with a satisfied smile. I think that says it all. Jessica narrowed her eyes as Brittany went into Gabe's office to collect her purse and everything she had strewn over Gabe's desk in her search for the USB stick. The confrontation with Gabe's secretary was concerning. It was obvious Jessica was jealous, but Brittany did believe her when she said she wasn't sleeping with her boss. Gabe wasn't the type to have an affair with a secretary. Brittany could sympathize with Jessica. She knew what it was like to love someone from afar. However, she wasn't about to let Jessica sabotage her chance with Gabe, not after waiting all these years. Sometimes Brittany could barely believe it. Gabe was going to marry her. Gazing down at the engagement ring, Gary sing her finger, Brittany smiled happily. Moving in this morning had been risky, but ultimately had been the right move. Now she had to finish moving in and start being indispensable to him. Once Gabe came to rely on her, he would never want to let her go. She was going to do this. Her dreams were about to come true. Brittany was going to make Gabe fall in love with her. Flicking the last of her stuff into her purse, Brittany walked with her head high through the outer office. She had dealt with tons of society girls who thought they were better than she was all her life. She could deal with one pesky secretary. Jessica ignored her exit, going so far as to turn her back on her. Well, it wasn't over. Jessica hadn't been in this battle for Gabe for as long as Brittany had been, and no one was as determined as Brittany Crawford. For the next hour, Brittany wandered through Gabe's workplace, chatting to random people and introducing herself. She especially loved Mario, the fellow who ran the coffee and snack cart. He was a friendly fount of information, who happily introduced her to a number of employees. Feeling like she had made some headway, but knowing she needed to get back to her condo before the moving guys came, Brittany said goodbye to Mario, promising to visit again. In fact, she was going to make herself a regular nuisance to Jessica. Brittany planned on bringing lunch every single workday to her dear fiancé. 
Gabe had said she could cancel his meal service, and starting tonight, he was eating her cooking only. Many popular magazines toted a way to a man's heart was through his stomach. Brittany was about to put the theory to the test. A short drive later, and she barely made it to her condo door before the movers arrived. She directed them to take her chair, nightstands, and bed, while she emptied the dresser into boxes to make it lighter for them to carry. She probably should have come home directly after talking to Gabe to be more prepared for the movers, Brittany reflected. However, she had wanted to stamp her mark on Gabe at his workplace, so by the end of the day, everyone would know he was getting married. She should also ask Gabe what co-workers he wanted to invite to the wedding. The rest of the morning was spent trying to keep ahead of the movers, packing up items which were going to her new home. Her new home. Just thinking the thought was exciting. Brittany was about to embark on a new adventure with Gabe. She pushed a strand of hair out of her face as she bent to tape another box shut. The movers had taken the bed apart and were taking the last pieces to the moving truck. Brittany didn't have much time to grab some necessities. While she could bring over boxes on her own, she preferred not to have to take too many trips. "'Why didn't you tell me?' asked Tara as she leaned in the doorway. "'I had to find out through the grapevine. When you didn't answer your phone, I came directly here.' Brittany looked up at her best friend with some trepidation. "'I wanted to tell you. You're the first person I thought of when it happened, but I also thought you wouldn't be happy for me.' "'Brit,' sighed Tara, coming into the room, sitting on the floor beside her friend. If you are happy, I'm happy. I've always loved him, shrugged Brittany. She grinned and showed Tara the engagement ring. We're getting married the last Saturday of the month. What? Tara jerked her eyes off the ring to look at Brittany. Are you kidding? Why so fast? He wants a child, announced Brittany. This is more than about a child, guessed Tara. Spill. Brittany sighed. She had known Tara would want the truth. Tara knew Brittany's troubled history with Gabe and wouldn't be convinced he had suddenly fallen in love with her, realized his feelings, and magically proposed. It was a nice fairy tale, but it wasn't true. His father gave him and his brothers an ultimatum, mumbled Brittany. They need to each get married within the month, produce a pregnancy within the year, and on the five-year anniversary of the marriage, the brothers will each receive their inheritance. If they refuse, they lose their positions with the company and are disinherited. Tara stared at her in shock. So Gabe and I are getting married. Brittany tried for a happy tone, which fell a little flat. We're going to have a child together. I've got five years to make him love me. Oh, Britt. Tara wrapped an arm around her friend. You can't make someone love you. They have to choose to love you. I can do this. A determined Brittany said, I will be the best wife anyone could ever have, and Gabe will be lost without me. It's happening again. We're spiraling down the Gabe hole, sighed Tara. This is going to be just like when you dyed your hair green. Except I will be his wife and have his baby, remarked Brittany. If you get pregnant. A lot of women don't get pregnant the first year of marriage, noted Tara. You face an even bigger obstacle with your health. Is your doctor even allowing this? I thought he wanted to perform a hysterectomy. He does. It's best to perform a hysterectomy before the cancer spreads, replied Brittany. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have this baby first. After the baby's born, then they can perform the surgery and I will do the cancer treatments. You're risking your life, warned Tara. I want to be a mom. I want to have a normal pregnancy and a happy baby. I'm willing to take the risk, responded Brittany. She clasped Tara's hand in hers. I need you to support me through this. I don't plan on telling Gabe about the cancer. Britt, he needs to know, insisted a shocked Tara. If he does, he'll break off the engagement and find someone else. She squeezed Tara's hand. It will tear up my heart if he marries anyone else. You know that. Gabe can't know about the cancer. Please, Tara, help me through this. Are you sure that this is what you want to do? questioned Tara. Lying to your husband isn't a good thing. I worry you'll end up like you always do, hurt by Gabe. I want this, Tara, Brittany said firmly. I'm going to take the chance at my happily ever after. It might not work out, 
but I will always have a piece of him through his child, and that alone will make me happy. Please understand. Torn, Tara looked at her friend in sympathy. You know I will always support you. Thank you. A relieved Brittany hugged Tara. I want you to be my maid of honor. I will be happy to be your maid of honor, said Tara as she squeezed Brittany back. Great, I need all the help I can get with the wedding in nineteen days. Grateful, Brittany gave Tara a smile. We are going to need to make some serious lists, Tara mentioned with a grin. Maybe we can laminate them. Brittany rolled her eyes. Don't remind me. What? It was a cute phase of yours, teased Tara. I still make lists, shrugged Brittany. It's a good way to stay organized. Don't ever change, Britt. Not for anyone. Not even Gabe, advised Tara. Brittany knew it wasn't likely. She would do what she had to in order to keep Gabe as hers. I moved in with him. What? Tara asked in surprise. Is that why the movers are here? Does Gabe know? He gave me a pass card, smiled Brittany. I'm moving into his spare room. Promise me, before you make any other big moves, you will run them past me, appealed Tara in concern. We don't want another talent show exposition, or a prom fiasco. We do not talk about prom, warned Brittany. That's why I'm trying to prevent another prom-like occurrence, appealed Tara. If you have any ideas which might even be the tiniest bit like prom, tell me so I can talk you down. I have grown up, Tara. I'm not the same Star Trek girl I was before, insisted Brittany. Gabe has his faults, and so do I. I'm just trying to compromise a little with the end goal of keeping him in mind. Just as long as you don't lose yourself in the process, advised Tara. How can anyone lose themselves, wondered Brittany. It seems silly. Don't worry, I'll be right here if it happens again, sighed Tara. She looked at the boxes. How much are we moving? Just enough to make me comfortable in the guest room, replied Brittany. Oh, I would like to take some of my kitchen items as well. Do you know he has no food in his condo? Nothing. Gabe has a meal service. They bring him everything and even take the dirty dishes. I called them to cancel. I'm going to be the one cooking. Did you ask Gabe if that was what he wanted? Questioned Tara. Both of you are in a relationship now. You have to take his wants into consideration as well as yours. I know I go overboard, admitted Brittany as she stood, grabbing the box and putting it in the hall. I get overly enthusiastic, and I forget to be reasonable. However, Gabe said I could. Okay, Tara capitulated. It was obvious this was what Brittany wanted. I'm happy for you. Let's get everything you want moved over. I've always wanted to snoop in a Ramsley condo. Brittany laughed, and the two friends chatted wedding ideas as they sorted through what would stay for now versus what needed to go to Gabe's condo today. It was awkward, Gabe decided. He had come home from work, the usual time to find Brittany had kept dinner waiting. She had insisting on eating together at the small dining table, which he never used. Gabe had decided to compromise and indulge her in this, but the small talk was just awkward. They had gone through how his meeting had went. They had discussed the rest of his day. Brittany had been delighted to meet his secretary, which Gabe didn't quite believe somehow, but he also didn't want to delve further into whatever had really happened between the pair. Jessica had been in a snit all day after her encounter with Brittany, and Gabe had simply decided not to react. Sometimes it was better to play a dumb man and pretend he didn't realize anything was wrong. They had conversed ad nauseum about Brittany's moving into the spare bedroom and her experience with the movers, who were apparently the most patient and helpful men she had ever met. Gabe neglected to say it was what she was paying them for, since he didn't think he wanted the fallout from such a comment. Finally, dinner was over. Gabe couldn't complain about the cooking. Brittany was exceptionally good at putting a meal together, she was even going to clean it up without any expectation of help. He had offered, although he had no idea how to do dishes. Gabe had never done any amount of household chores in his life. Thankfully, Brittany had turned him down. Now she was puttering around, pulling things out of her boxes and finding new places for them to reside. She still had a small stack of them in the hallway and was slowly bringing them in and unpacking. 
Gabe was thankful the majority of her stuff was finding its way into her room. However, there were exceptions, which he didn't particularly enjoy. He had made the condo his home, and now he was having to share, which was something Gabe wasn't used to. Trying to ignore Brittany, he concentrated on his laptop, running the numbers again. Gabe frowned, highlighting an area for further investigation. Since he had learned that the family business was being used as a front for laundering money, Gabe had been meticulously going over the accounting to ensure there wasn't any odd activity going on in the past eight years. The FBI was still going over the company figures in the ongoing investigation, and Gabe didn't want any surprises that he would have to explain during his tenure as head of Ramsley HMC. He would scrutinize the business now and be prepared for any eventuality. Glancing at his watch, Gabe realized the time. Shutting his laptop, he set everything away for the next morning and checked to see if he had any messages or texts a moment as he got up to get ready for bed. Gabe abruptly looked up from his cell phone. Something was wrong. His peripheral vision had picked up something that hadn't been there before. Turning his head slowly, he surveyed the room to find the kitchen counters cluttered with all sorts of small appliances in bright red. Tightening his jaw, Gabe narrowed his eyes. Brit? What is it? Brittany asked offhandedly as she walked from the hall towards her designated bedroom with yet another box in her arms. She didn't even look towards Gabe as she walked the short distance. Why are there things in my kitchen? he demanded. What things? she asked, her voice muffled as she put the box in the bedroom. Things, clarified Gabe, waving his phone at them, on my countertops. Things? Brittany had a little laugh as she came into the kitchen. What things? These, Gabe pointed, all these gadgets? They are kitchen appliances. They belong in the kitchen? Brittany raised an eyebrow, half amused at his antics. They can't be here, he told her tersely. Brittany folded her arms and cocked her head to the side. I'm moving in. I have stuff. It needs to go someplace. Well, it can't go here, reiterated Gabe, glaring at her red stand mixer. You can leave it in storage. No, I'm not going to put it in storage, as I plan on using these appliances quite a bit, sighed Brittany. Is this about you not wanting me to move in? I agree. Agree to your moving in. Gabe gestured at the countertop. I did not agree to allow you to clutter up my condo. Gabe? Brittany stepped in front of him so that he had to look at her. We agreed I would move in so my condo could sell. I am moving in. We are about to get married. This means my stuff will be your stuff, and your stuff will be my stuff. When we are married, I will be moving into the master bedroom with you. It is how these things work. You had to know this was coming. You have too much stuff, he worked out while taking in a deep breath to try to tamp down the panic. We will be getting a house, Brittany shrugged, unconcerned. It will have more than enough room for everything we have. A house? echoed Gabe, his stomach bottoming out. What would they do with a house? Visions of chaos of kids and a dog running through with mud on them were conjured by his brain. Stop looking so pale and like you want to throw up? She rolled her eyes. A baby means even more stuff, and we need at least three bedrooms. This place is just too small. We will get a nice house, preferably somewhere near a park and a good school. A house, breathed Gabe in distress. We are not getting a house. What do you mean a, near a good school? This kid will be a Ramsley. All Ramsleys have gone to Livingston Academy since the institution opened. I was thinking perhaps we could break with tradition, Brittany pertly told him. According to recent studies, most children are happier being brought up middle class. I want our son to be happy, so I think a nice middle class neighborhood and school would be perfect. No, just the security ramifications would be a nightmare, breathed Gabe. Absolutely not. Don't you want your son to be happy? asked Brittany, slightly annoyed at his flat refusal of her plan. I want him or her not to be kidnapped, retorted Gabe. Like it or not, people of a certain class are targeted. It's the reason we pay for security. 
You can't buy safety, reasoned Brittany. No one can be bubble-wrapped all of their lives. It's just not realistic. Look at your cousins. Many of them have done all sorts of thrill-seeking adventures and have come back more confident, more mature. Max lives on the streets for a while, and he was perfectly fine. He and Paget live a middle-class lifestyle. Their boys are perfectly happy. They even share a room. Morgan and Ryder go to Livingston Academy, Gabe quickly pointed out. They go to school with their cousins. Going to a proper educational facility sets the groundwork for higher education opportunities with Ivy League schools. Brittany frowned. Do you hear what a snob you are? I'm just debating the merits of a good educational foundation, reasoned Gabe, knowing he was starting to win the argument when Brittany called him names. It had been that way ever since their first debate against each other at Livingston Academy. Brittany narrowed her eyes, and Gabe's stomach clenched. She was about to deliver a knockout punch. With a sickeningly sweet smile, Brittany responded, I will compromise. Compromise is what a marriage is all about. A house in a middle-class neighborhood near the park, but close enough to Livingston Academy so he can attend, continuing the family tradition. I want to keep our child grounded instead of becoming a complete snobby bore. Gabe frowned. Was she calling him a snobby bore? It pricked his ego to hear her say it. We don't need a house in a middle-class area. Yet we are getting one if you want your son to go to Livingston Academy. Brittany left to grab another box. Fine. Gabe decided to agree for now. Once they saw the houses available, Brittany was sure to change her mind and realize it wasn't the type of lifestyle to raise a child in. What they needed was a nice, secure condo building on the edge of the city with a great security system and door person. They could employ a driver to take the child to school each day and a nanny to deal with the mess the kid would leave. It was a good solution. I'm going to reduce my hours at my job, Brittany announced as she came in with the next box. It makes sense since I'll be staying home with the baby. Once he goes to preschool, I can increase a few hours if I want, but I'll still mostly work from home. Tara and I have already talked about it. She did it when she had her children, and now I will get to do the same. Why? frowned Gabe. If you want to work, it isn't a big deal. I'm not a traditionalist like my parents. Even though Mom didn't work, it wasn't like we saw her very often with her charity events. Brittany stopped, looking at him with something akin to pity. I'm staying home and working part-time because I hated being raised by a nanny. Children should be raised by their parents. They should know their mom and dad. Don't you want to spend time with our child? I thought you would teach him how to play catch, ride a bike, bring him up to ball games, that sort of thing. James had never done any of those things with his sons. Gabe remembered his father teaching how to crunch numbers and spot discrepancies in reports. He had learned how to lead a company, not how to play catch. His cousins had taught him how to play and have fun, certainly not James. I don't know. I guess maybe. I hadn't really thought about it. Which is why we need a house with a backyard, said Brittany in satisfaction. Maybe even a dog. No. Gabe bit out. I definitely draw the line at dogs. Then a cat. Brittany tossed over her shoulder as she deposited the box on the sofa of the living room. She tore off the tape, sorting through bubble wrap to bring out a lamp. Cats get hair everywhere. Gabe gave the offending stand mixer a last glare before going to the living room to try to reason with Brittany. They aren't good for kids. Says who? She moved aside a stack of printed reports off an end table and put down her lamp, looking for an electrical outlet. Says the kid who choked on a hairball and whatever else cats leave behind? Gabe wrinkled his nose. No pets. Fish? A turtle? Brittany leaned over the sofa, stretching to plug in the lamp. Who's going to clean the aquarium? Questioned Gabe while he had a look at the view. Berating himself, he tore his eyes away. He didn't like Brit, he reminded himself. I'm certainly not going to. He was marrying Brit. The panicky thought interrupted him. She always argued with him, pushing the envelope. She disagreed with him and wanted to take risks. She wasn't a safe choice. Good point. She straightened, then reached for the box. We'll stick to the dog, then. No dog, he repeated. 
mentally dragging his thoughts back to the conversation. Something small. Brittany put a small framed picture out of the box, looking around the living room with a discerning eye. What does your cousin Dylan have again? You know, those cute little fat things that smile. I don't know, and we aren't getting one. Gabe felt like he was talking to himself for all the listening Brittany was doing. Pets are unhygienic. We don't want our baby around unhygienic things. It's unhealthy. Brittany set down the frame with some satisfaction on a side table near the windows before turning to face Gabe and decide just how serious he was. He was pretty serious, she concluded. We will revisit it when the baby's a little older. Perhaps just after the toddler phase? It'll be better for him to grow up with a dog. Are you even listening to me? Gabe waved his arms in frustration. Not really. Brittany shrugged and smiled. I have an appointment with the realtor next weekend so we can look at a house. Gabe stopped still, feeling a little trapped. I'm not available. Yes, you are, she said smugly. I already checked your agenda. There's nothing listed. There is a conference, improvised Gabe quickly. It's mandatory that I be there. There is no conference, repeated Brittany with patience, sticking magnets with cutesy flower designs on them to his fridge. His spotless, clean, stainless steel fridge. Sure there is, Gabe stated resolutely, trying to get out of the house hunting with Brittany. I just didn't write it down. You write everything in your planner. Brittany said dryly, and there is nothing for next weekend except reviewing a bunch of boring reports which you can do any time. You're coming with me if you want to have any say where you live for the next five years. Otherwise, I'll just pick it for us. If she picked it, it would no doubt be some horrible pink creation with trim and knickknacks everywhere, thought Gabe as he forced a breath through his lungs. She might even want to go so far as a fixer-upper since Brittany always loved watching those home makeover shows. Gabe had accidentally found out that fact in college. He didn't know why, but facts about Brittany always seemed to stick in his brain, despite his wish that they wouldn't. Gabe was not going to raise his kid and live for the next five years in some wholesome wreck of a house with asbestos and drywall dust everywhere, while Britt held a crowbar and murmured she hadn't realized it had been a supporting wall she had torn down. Fine, I will go. Brittany gave him a luminous smile, and Gabe could feel his heart skip a beat. It's just fear, he told himself firmly. It couldn't possibly be anything else. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this chapter of Convincing Him, Book 9 of the Ramsley Brothers series, look for the next chapter. Please consider subscribing to the channel. That way you won't miss any new chapters as they drop each week. Happy listening!